Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this Monday, the 13th of December. It is but 12 days and cruel Christmas day. I hope you're all getting ready and I hope it is going to be a good and festive period. But today we are remembering uh, St. Lucy, Martyr at uh, Syracuse, uh, and also Samuel Johnson, Moralist. Um, so we're going to have a quick look at uh, St. Lucy uh, this morning, and we'll have a look at Samuel Johnson this afternoon. Um, so um, St. Lucy was born around the year 283 um, in uh, Syracuse, which is uh, the uh, historical capital island of Sicily. Um, uh, and uh, she died there in the year 304. So she wasn't that old when she died, she was about 21. Uh, and she is, uh, I'll tell you about, let me tell you her patronages first, uh, and then we'll have a quick look about what she got up to. So she, Lucy, Lucy is the patron saint for the blind, martyrs, uh, Pergula in Italy, uh, Mutfa in uh, Malta, Epidemic, Salesman, uh, Syracuse in Italy, Throat Infectors, Writers, uh, Sassamula, uh, um, Papania in, uh, in the Philippines. So the oldest um, kind of records we have of uh, St. Lucy come from the 5th century in the Acts of Martyrs. Um, and uh, there are various different accounts, but the one which they all agree on um, is that uh, a disappointed suit accused Lucy of being a Christian. And on that accusation, she was then executed. Um, so this is during the time of the uh, Diocletian uh, uh, per persecution. So the Emperor uh, uh, Di um, Diocletus, I think, is the correct uh, kind of alliteration of that. Um, obviously, Christians at this point uh, were, were hunted down for being terribly dangerous people, as we all know that we are. Um, and uh, so she was venerated, uh, and her veneration spread, spread to Rome, and by the 6th century, according to this, um, she was venerated within the whole of the church. Um, the oldest archaeological evidence comes from Greek inscriptions of the catacombs of St. Uh, St. John uh, in, uh, in Syracuse, and it's his... Uh, and there's a uh, Jacobus de Vorgiani, uh, Ligianda Aurora, uh, was the uh, widely read version in the Middle Ages. So, um, as I said, she died very, very young. She was born to rich noble parents, and uh, um, uh, but her parents died when she was very young, so when she was five years old. Uh, she left Lucy, uh, so her father died when she was five years old. Lucy and her mother uh, uh, were without a protective guardian. Her mother was called uh, um, Ectusia. Uh, seems to indicate she came from a Greek background, um, and uh, and so yes, yeah, so she, like many earlier, Lucy was a consecrated virgin to God, and she hoped to distribute her dowry, so what would have been her her uh, the money given at her marriage to the poor. Um, however, um, her mother did not know of her po uh, her promise, and so and was worried about Lucy's future. So um, and so she had arranged for a ma uh, to be married to a wealthy family, and of course when she rejected this. Um, she was then outed as being Christian, and it all falls apart from there. So a short but uh, a noteworthy life, and uh, we will pray for all who are dedicating themselves to God, and we will pray for all who are trying to help those who are poor. But let us come together, let us pray to God, and let us ask for his blessing upon us. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, the creator of all, to you praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn for one high is broken upon us, to, uh, to spell the lingering shadow of night. As we look for your coming amongst us this day, so open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The earth is the Lord's and all that fills it, the compass of the world and all who dwell therein. For he is founded upon the seas, and fir set it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, or who can rise up to his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol, nor sworn an oath to a lie. And they shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, 
and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> the night has passed, and the daylight is open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice with the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our first psalm for this morning is Psalm 40. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me out of the roaring pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a rock and made my footing sure. He has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to, your, uh, to our God. Many shall see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not turn to the proud that follow a lie. Great are your wonders you have done, O Lord my God, how great your design for us. There is none that can be compared with you. If I were to proclaim and tell them, they would be more than I am able to express. Sacrifice and offerings you do not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sacrifice for sins you have not required. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me that I should do your will, O Lord my God. I delight to do it. Your law is within my heart. I have declared your righteousness to the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness I have not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness, of your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and truth from the great congregation. Do not withhold your compassion from me, O Lord. Let your love and your faithfulness always preserve me. For innumerable troubles have come upon me. My sins have overtaken me so that I cannot look up. They are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them be driven back and put to shame who wish me evil. Those who heap insult upon me be desolate because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation say always, The Lord is great. Though I am poor and needy, the Lord cares for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. O God, make no delay. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. Our, New uh, sorry, our Old Testament reading is a continuation of the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 38, verses 1 to 8 and 21 to 22. In those days, Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die, you shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to God, Remember now, O Lord, I implore you, how I have walked before you in the faithfulness with a whole heart, and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of your ancestor David, you have heard your, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria and defend this city. This is the promise to you from the Lord that the Lord will do this thing that he promised. I see I will make a, a shadow cast by the declining sun on the dial of Ahaz. Turn back 10 steps. So the sun turned back on the dial the 10 steps by which it had declined. Now Isaiah has said, let them take a, a lump of figs and apply it to the boil so that he may recover. Hezekiah also had said, What is the sign that I should go up to the house of the Lord? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. The wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice. The desert shall blossom and burst into song. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weary hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to the anxious, be strong, fear not, your God is coming with judgment, coming with judgment to save you. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped.
Then shall the lame leap like a harp, and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The ransoms of the Lord shall return with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Joy and gladness shall be theirs, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lift up your voice with strength, O herald of good tidings. Our New Testament reads the continuation of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 to the end of the chapter. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are the setting your minds not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any, of, uh, and if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my, uh, for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now it is time to wake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light, for the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, We pray and give thanks for the day that lies ahead of us. Be with us, Lord. Guide us so that we may do what is right by you. Show us the path you would have us follow. Keep us on the route which leads to you, that leads to your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray and give thanks for your servant and martyr, St. Lucy, for her dedication to you, for consecrating herself to you, 
We pray for all who are called to dedicate their lives to your service. We pray for all who are called to the life monastic. We pray for those who are helping those who are poor and homeless. We pray for all who are showing love to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all being affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who are sick at this time. We pray for those who are in need of care and support, for those suffering with long COVID. We pray for all who are in need of hospitalization. We pray for those who have died. We pray for those who are worried that their plans will be disrupted, that they will struggle, that they will not be able to see their families. And we pray for all the workers of the NHS and the volunteers who are helping to administer the vaccines. Lord, keep us safe. Help us to watch out and to support one another. Help us to have patience in this trying time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we continue counting down and looking forward to the advent of your Son, help us to be ready spiritually to receive him. May we be ready physically to receive him. May we be ready emotionally to receive him. Lord, help us to deepen our faith, to trust in your love, and to show that love to all whom we deal with. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for all who are struggling at this time. We pray for those who are unable to make ends meet. We pray for those who are making use of the food bank and the fuel bank. We pray for those who are in poverty. And we pray for all who are able to, they may support the work of the food bank and fuel bank. Help us, Lord, to share so that all may have sufficient. Help us to have enough that we may all be able to live comfortably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You sent your Son, Lord, the Prince of Peace, that he may come to bring peace to the world. Lord, we pray for all places of violence and conflict. We pray for all places where there is strife and danger. Help us, Lord, to be kind to one another. Help us to work to find uh, peace. Help us that we may do what is right and just. We pray, Lord, that you would support all who are fleeing their homes. Help us, Lord, that we may support those who are seeking asylum. May we show kindness and compassion as you have shown to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are sick in mind, body and spirit. We pray for those who are known to us. We pray especially by name for Davy, Jilly, Megan, Ella, Mary, Tina, Robert, David, Peter, Robert, Rose, Bailey, Sarah, Gwenna, David, Helen, Mary, and Gillian. We pray too, Lord, for those who are known to you alone, for those who are suffering in silence. We pray for all who are reaching the end of their lives and those who recently lost their lives. We pray especially for Bert, Peter, and Matthew. We pray for all who are mourning their loss. We pray for all who are mourning and all who carry the scars of loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Redeemer, who gave light to the, uh, to the world that was in darkness, by the healing power of the Saviour's cross, 
Shed that light on us, we pray, that with your martyr Lucy, we may, by the purity of our lives, reflect the light of Christ, and by the merits of his passion, come to the light of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please do join me this evening at 5pm for evening prayer. And until we see each other again, God bless, stay safe, and have a very good day.